Last month, the limited production 986 horsepower McLaren P1 LM became the world's fastest production car around the most demanding circuit in the world, the 20.8 km Nurburgring Norch Leaf. The time of 6, 43.2 is so extraordinary that it is a significant automotive landmark for McLaren, the Lanzanti team that executed the mission, and the car that was used. Here's why. Breaking the Nürburgring Norch Leaf production lap record is no mean feat. A car's lap time around the Nürburgring Norch Leaf, the circuit Jackie Stewart named the Green Hell, has long been the benchmark for performance cars and attempts at lap record by factory teams have become increasingly common in recent years, because a good lap time around the circuit validates that cars sporting bona fides. It is very difficult to fudge a good lap time around the Nürburgring Norch Leaf. Without race-winning road holding, acceleration, braking, speed and super pendling, it just can't be done. You need a very good driver and an extraordinary car to cope with the Nürburgring's unique combination of racetrack challenges, and to do it faster than anyone else has ever done it, in a car that is in series production and can be legally driven on the road. The above is a precise list of the lap times produced by cars that vaguely fit the description of a production road car, so let's start there. What is a production road car? One of the biggest problems of such record attempts is in the use of the term production car. McLaren's PR department has skillfully validated the road car claim by driving the P1 LM back to London in bleak northern European weather, and the P1 LM is a production car because Lanzanti produced five of them, so each car had already been handmade from unobtainium twice, once by McLaren, then again by Lanzanti. The price of the P1 LM is unclear because like Superiax and other hyper-exclusive luxury items, discretion is part of the deal. Lanzani has acknowledged that the five cars went to America, Japan, UAE and the UK, but that's all we'll find out until the cars and buyers are identified by the press. The first of the five to surface was reportedly offered for 3.6 million US dollars last September and another was offered for 4.36 million US dollars last October. Lanzanti isn't even saying what the original price was, but let's consider the economics. Each LM was produced at incredible expense from the £1,980,000 racetrack only McLaren P1 GTR. On top of that, in order to become one of the five given the opportunity to purchase a P1 LM, you had to already own a £1,150,000 McLaren P1 to begin with. Most guesses as to the purchase price paid for the McLaren P1 LM are in the vicinity of £3.0 million. Another factor related to the production car lap record is that once any worthwhile quest has been established, man's ingenuity in achieving the goal knows no bounds, and moral compasses become dysfunctional. The NIOE P9, pictured above, which McLaren just knocked off the top of the list, is a Chinese supercar that isn't yet in production and it wore slick tires for the record attempt. That and many other attempts were performed by a factory team, and there's a lot you can do underneath the skin to extract performance. In the case of electric vehicles in particular, there's much that can be done when peak performance only needs to last for 20 kilometers. There is no oversight or validating body for any of the Nürburgring lap times and when one single string of numbers such as NIO 6, 45.9 can establish the car's credibility, and the viability of an entire company can hinge on getting that number, suspending disbelief is becoming increasingly problematic. The McLaren P1 LM The McLaren P1 LM is the last of McLaren's P1 variants. It's also the rarest. There were 375 P1 units made, plus 45 race-only GTR versions of which 5 were converted by Lanzanti to become GTR-based LM road cars. Take a look at the picture above and you'll get just an inkling of the massive difference between the relatively common P1 hypercar at the top of the image and the one of 5 P1 LM at the bottom of the image. There's a reason the LM costs nearly three times as much and you can't see most of the things they did under the skin, or the way the entire front of the car has been redesigned with a much bigger front splitter. 
the overall aerodynamic changes resulted in 40% extra downforce at speed. The LM shares 986 horsepower, 735 kilowatts. GTR powertrain has 83 horsepower more than the P1. This was achieved by increasing the capacity of the twin-turbo V8 engine from 3798cc to 3994cc to produce 789 horsepower, 588 kilowatts, while its electric companion motor provides a supplementary 197 horsepower, 148 kilowatts. The team and driver, Kenny Brack and Lanzanti. The driver for the Nürburgring record was Kenny Brack. 1998 Indy Racing League Champion, 1999 Indianapolis 500 winner and the Rally X Gold Medal winner at the 2009 X Games 15. Kenny has driven a lot of miles on the limit in a P1 and is one of the greatest talents never to have raced in Formula 1. He's also an official McLaren test driver, so don't underestimate the presence of McLaren in this attempt. Lanzanti may not be a name our readers are familiar with. The company's website will do little to enlighten you and that's undoubtedly fine with Lanzanti. Why spend your marketing budget on people you don't do business with? Those who can afford to do business with Lanzanti know the company. The Wikipedia entry offers more info, but that's just a fraction of the story, as you don't get to remanufacture a McLaren and give it an official model designation without producing work that is beyond astonishingly excellent. The company has a long association with McLaren, and ran the semi-works McLaren F1 GTR that won the 1995-24 Hours of Le Mans, where McLaren took four of the first five places in the event at its first attempt. That's the Lanz anti-car that made history in 1995 above. The Nürburgring lap record project also received considerable support from the rally which made a special road legal trophy attire specifically for the P1 LM. One wonders how much clout you need to persuade a huge tire company to produce tires for a run of five cars, or how much it will cost in Luminona to keep their toy well healed or more relevant to this article, whether it stretches the definition of production car too far in claiming the lap record. An indication of the extent to which Lanzanti went in creating the P1 LM is the Alcantara trimmed steering wheel. All five LMs use a modified version of the wheel used in the McLaren MP4-23 driven by Lewis Hamilton to win the 2008 F1 driver's title. There are a host of other refinements on the LM, which is claimed to be some 60 kg lighter than even the GTR thanks to a host of weight-saving measures such as the removal of the race-ready air jack system, the use of lightweight seats replicated from the original McLaren F1 GTR, lightweight and canal exhaust and titanium tailpipes, lightweight fabricated charge coolers, legs and windows, and the use of titanium bolts and fixings. Notably, the car retains air conditioning, and Lanzani has added a toolkit replicating that of the original McLaren F1. Knees for some. The outright Nürburgring Notch Leaf lap record. Many news outlets are reporting that the McLaren LM6, 43.2 was an outright lap record for the Nürburgring Notch Leaf circuit. Though the Norch Leaf circuit layout used for these production record attempts is now open to the public, it hasn't seen use in an open racing event since 1983 when the outright lap record was set by Stefan Beloff in a Porsche 956, just like the one above, at 6, 11.13, which highlights the difference between a road car and a race car. With a 2.65-liter turbocharged flat-six engine producing just 635 horsepower, 474 kilowatts. The Porsche 956 took pole position for the 1983 World Endurance Championship round held at Nürburgring. That's 350 horsepower less than the McLaren P1 LM, but the Porsche 956 weighed in at 800 kilograms, almost half the weight of the P1 LM.